The following program contains graphic descriptions of events including crime scenes of actual murders. Parental discretion is advised. Lucille Dedman was strangled and raped on May 20th in 1967. Authorities, who thought was her killer, was arrested and sentenced to 18 years in prison. His name was Roger Dedman. He was her husband. While Roger Dedman was serving his life sentence, three more would lose their lives. Nine months after Dedman was arrested in February of 1968, Nancy Paris was found nude, strangled, and raped on a riverbank beneath a bridge. Her husband had reported her missing after she didn't return home after a walk with their dog. Nancy Paris was only 20 years old. Then, on February 8th, Nancy Reinhardt was also found strangled and raped, but this time, this victim was found under a brush pile, and she was only 14 years old. The same day Nancy Reinhardt's body was discovered, the editor at the Gaffney Ledger received an anonymous phone call. Bill Gibbons, the editor, gave the police all the information from the call, which included directions to the location of two of the bodies. He had also told Gibbons that he was in fact the killer of Annie Dedman, and they have the wrong man in prison. Authorities immediately followed the instructions given to them to find the bodies. They did indeed find the bodies of Paris and Reinhardt. Another phone call came later that week, again, to the editor. All he told him was that there would be more killings. The fourth and final murder happened on February 13, 1968. 15-year-old Opal Buxen was walking with her sister to the school bus stop. She was abducted and thrown into a trunk of a car. Her sister was able to give a description of the vehicle to the police. Several days later, Opal was found nude in a wooded area. She was strangled and stabbed to death. A lot of the residents of Gaffney got involved in helping find this killer. The morning Opal Buxton was abducted, Henry Transo and Lester Skinner, two local residents of Gaffney, set out to look for the vehicles that was described by Opal's sister. Just hours after she was taken, they spotted a car in a wooded area. They also saw a man standing next to a dirt path in the woods. They decided to drive right by him he immediately jumped in the car and sped off. They did, however, have enough time to write down the license plate number of that car. Later that day, the two gentlemen and the police returned to the dirt path in the woods where they saw the car. Right nearby was Opal's body. Finally, on May 27th in 1968, police made an arrest. Lee Roy Martin, took police to the locations of the other bodies. He also turned over evidence to them. Martin was convicted of first-degree murder of all four of the killings. As much as the community wanted to see Martin get the death penalty, he was not properly given the right to counsel. As a result of Martin's incarceration, Roger Dedman, the first victim's husband that was put away for the murder, was released from Union County Prison Camp on March 1st. All charges were dropped. Then on May 31st in 1972, Martin was stabbed to death by Kenneth Rumsey, a fellow inmate. Shortly after that, Rumsey had taken his own life. Martin's reason for killing was pretty simple. He was noted as saying, I have a split personality. One is evil and one is good. The evil side makes me do violent things. And one day, the evil side just took over my good side. And that is all. <laughs>